so next up we have industrial control panel here in article 100. Now this is two or more circuit, uh, power circuit components, control circuit components, or a combination of both mounted in or on an enclosure. Okay, so looking at the photograph here, this certainly meets that definition. We have ourselves an enclosure. We have control components here on the left. We have power components on the right. That is definitely an industrial control panel. This definition and its associated article, which is Article 409, were added, I think, in 2005, maybe it was 2008. And the reason it was added is because we need requirements so that we know how to build these things in the field. Uh, because a lot of times they are built in the field. I mean, certainly you could have one custom built and designed and ordered for your facility, but oftentimes we're either creating it in the field or we're creating it at our own shop and we're installing it out in the field, and we need to have requirements and provisions on how to do that. So Article 409 was added, and this, this angers a lot of people when I tell them this, but it's the truth. Article 409 was added because industrial control panels do not have to be listed. If they had to be listed, then Article 409 would consist of one sentence. It would say, industrial control panels shall be listed, and we could delete the rest of it. All right? Article 409 is there to give the electrician the tools that he or she needs to create this thing without having to have it listed. Because a lot of times, it's just there, there's no reason that it would need to be listed. It's just control components. So let's take a look at a couple of the requirements really quickly in Article 409, just to kind of flesh out how this article works and the definition. 409.22a is the deal breaker. Okay, this is where you can get in trouble with an industrial control panel. It says industrial control panels must have a short circuit current rating that's equal to or greater than the available fault current. Now, that can get kind of tricky because if we're using components that aren't listed, then we can't possibly assign a short circuit current rating to it. What, what's a short circuit current rating? Well, that's the amount of current that a piece of equipment can take under fault conditions without experiencing extensive damage to itself. And we're gonna talk about that in a, in a different video. So how do I know what the short circuit current rating of an industrial control panel is? Well, that's a tough one. But fortunately, there is an allowance in 409.110 item four exception that says if all you have in your industrial control panel are control components, and that's what we have here. If that's all that we have, then you do not need to have a short circuit current rating. So the short circuit current rating is where everything changes. If it needs to have a short circuit current rating, you're probably gonna have to have a field evaluation. You're gonna have to call up UL or Intertech or, or Met Labs or TUV. There, there's all sorts of different ones and I, I'm not advertising for any of them. Call them up and they might have to visit your facility and do a field evaluation and they're gonna take a look and see if it, for the most part, if it complies with 50, uh, UL 508A, if I'm not mistaken. So industrial control panels don't have to be listed, but if they have to have a short circuit current rating, that's gonna be tough, because that's not really something that you can figure out in the field without a field evaluation. If an industrial control panel is required to be marked with a short circuit current rating, which means that there's power components in there, uh, then the available fault current and the date of the calculation must be documented and must be made available to those that are authorized to inspect the installation. So looking at this photograph here, uh, that has power components and it has control components. That thing has to have a short circuit current rating, which means what? Well, I'm probably going to have to have a field evaluation so we can figure out what the short circuit current rating is. And we're going to have to calculate the available fault current and it's going to have to be documented and be made available to anybody that needs to know that information. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.